Ah, that was a really nice rest from all this plundering and conquering we've been doing this past year. But they don't stop releasing new campaigns, so we won't stop running them. Today we go back to something we've done before, sacking Rome. Geyseric became king of the Vandals after his dad died by the hands of the Frankish chieftains, and we start our journey towards Rome with vengeance. The Vandals are a nomadic tribe, never heard of arms before, and are in a land where gold only exists in the pockets of enemies or their houses. Despite the limitations of the 5th century, we have the ability to just pack our shit and move wherever we feel like due to the ox car technology in the town center. And we start with the power moves early on, dropping the town center right where the first chieftain was murdered. Really big fan of the years being shown on the side, it's like a less stressful wonder countdown. We start in the Dark Age and only really have access to barracks to start with, as the Vandals can't even build lumber camps or mills. But that doesn't matter much when we have access to Huskarls right off the bat. We can also talk to cows, who would have guessed the Hindus were right? But since resources are limited, we can't waste time sitting around and must enact revenge while there's still some food left in the settlement. Revenge for the death of Vendo Papa is done by killing the four Frankish chieftains. Luckily they're all bundled pretty much next to each other and picking them off starts relatively well. We also meet some new Kipchak friends that were fleeing the Huns? I don't like that. I've heard the Huns are pretty angry. But that's a problem to worry about later. Right now I'm just happy I got some keep checks and found some goats to slaughter, because there's absolutely nothing but dead trees in this godforsaken land. I guess murdering the French is all I can really do for now, really. And even that I have to do very carefully, because losing too many troops here feels like I would get punished harder than jaywalking in Germany. But we killed the third chieftain and leave the wounded to be sung at by our in-house priest. We roll back to the Frankish camp to finish looting and are greeted by a full herd of sheep, geese and all the good meats to supply the army. Look at all these meats everybody, we're feasting today. While the feast is prepared, we march north to finish the revenge storyline. Papa can now rest in peace, knowing we avenge his death by setting friends back by a few hundred years. And as a bonus, we start making way to the feudal age and finding more tasty tasty sheep. With the vandal power growing, we build a blacksmith to upgrade our vandalism. Hopefully some spray paint unlocks now. No, just boring blacksmith things. We continue pushing deeper into goth territory this time, as our cow telepathy guided us in this direction. You are free now, my bovine friends. Free to become hamburgers. At this point, the game pretty much becomes a hunt for goth tribes in the area to loot. I went into the scenario without doing much research, so I don't really know what find a new home for the vandals really meant. Sacking a Roman city feels pretty straightforward, but I felt we were still a bit too weak at this point to just go ham at them. While scouting for more tribes, we passed by some lands next to the Alps that looked ripe for a new temporary camp, so it was time to pack up and move. Through Vandal Starch, even their own buildings when it's time to move. The inability of the villagers to walk with organization really adds to the immersion here. And we start settling in greener pastures, although that doesn't make much of a difference considering we haven't thought about throwing seeds on the ground or anything like this. But at least we have more goths to pasture around the area for their cows and we find another priest to join the cause on the promise of him being able to educate the Roman children we capture. Such a nice guy thinking about the future of the Vandal youth. The quality of life improvements are felt straight away, and we push to reach Castle Age, while news come that we have friends in Spain waiting for us. In the beginning of the scouting for the way towards Spain, we find another priest, and our first Roman city. The troops are positioned outside city walls when dire news arrive. The Huns have arrived in Gaul. This is not a good sign in any way. I don't like the idea of fighting against Tarkans and cavalry archers one bit, so we speed up the siege and just run at their gates. Because the Romans let us in, the pillaging goes on overdrive from the get-go. We also have stolen the Tarkan idea from the Huns. It really feels like the Vandals could be a fun third barbarian civilization for the game. A mix between the Goths and the Huns, the third horsemen of Roman apocalypse. And by how the scenario is going with resources, it's pretty obvious they would be famine. If only these Roman cities had food stored. But I think they're starving as much as we are. Although maybe we can make some golds too, since destroying their buildings give us gold. Probably not healthy, but it's some sustenance. And since we'll be shitting gold, we can buy some Tarkans. We also have the edge when it comes to city pillaging by the fact that they have no communication with each other inside the walls. So no one comes to defend different areas of the city. I really like the gold for destruction mechanic. Makes me feel really good about leveling the whole town. Lugdunum fills the heavy sack of the Vandals. And we get our new objective. Reaching our pen pals in eastern Spain. Hey guys, you wanna sack Rome with us? But we are Roman. It's okay, we won't tell anyone about it. Ah, okay. Alright, time to get the fuck out of here before the Huns find out that we're on their way. Not without burning all our shit before, of course. We're not complete barbarians, we also convinced our generals to join the vandalism without violence. 
our Peregrine Nation Southwest goes swimmingly, with many villages graffitied and penises drawn on churches, and without attracting the Huns towards us. Sadly, the Romans weren't very fond of our modern art and come to try and stop us, but there's a reason why the Empire fell shortly after. To avoid contact with the Huns, our folk followed the coast until reaching yet another village ill-protected, a prime location for another quick settling, with their farms and sheep just waiting for us. Oh hell no, we can't let the French go unpunished for this kidnapping. But first we must make sure to get some military production going to use all these spoils of war. We reach Imperial Age shortly after settling and it seems like the Huns can really smell an empire from miles away. After dealing with them, we march north to save the princess, just to be forced to retreat by yet another Hunnic attack. Atlas buddies do some symbolic damage before we arrive and we push the savages away. The march north resumes, this time with more haste as it seems like the Huns will keep coming as long as we stay in the only passage towards Spain available. The princess is safe at least. It's really scary to see the Huns galloping like this towards us. And because we saved the princess, the Spanish Vikings decide to join the cause, just in time for another wave of Huns. I tried walling the shallow waters with buildings, but it didn't work too well and we are forced to take the worst fight possible against them. Luckily we somehow annihilated them with barely any casualties. But I didn't feel like staying for round 3, so the scout was sent ahead to find new suitable lands. A way was mapped, sneaking past Roman cities and goth villages, all the way down to where the Allens and Swabies are waiting for us. Emphasis on waiting, of course the Spanish are just taking a siesta waiting for contact instead of helping out. Upon making contact and reinforcing the Vandal force, we are given our new objective, sacking Rome and settling for good in Carthage. And that's what we're going for, because it's already 2 hours in and we barely reached Spain. So pack up everyone, we're going on another exodus through Europe. At least we travel around the defended enemies pretty much unbothered, as they stay close to their camps and cities. The crossing of the Pyrenees goes very uneventful, and we arrive at the next selected Vendo development. I mean, besides half our villagers losing focus and just wandering around begging to be executed by the Huns. But we arrive in one piece, and start building up our little village again, and pestering Roman villages just to not lose practice. It's impressive how well defended everything is considering the big decline in which the Empire is at this day and age. I wonder if the Centurions are running their own rules and systems to keep order and peace around here. Granted it doesn't matter one bit when we arrive, murder everyone and torch all their buildings for shits and giggles. And just like this, Tahako becomes the second Roman city to be leveled by Geiseric and his band of Vandals, leaving the way to New Carthage free for the siege to begin. And why is New Carthage important? Well, they have docks and we need ships to sail to Old Carthage, because the game knows the difference between the two. Nothing but a little speed bump on our quest to style over Rome like never done before. Hey guys, I know vandalism is cool and kind of our thing, but farms can be used for us, you know. You don't have to take our profession this literally. Let's use the anger and energy to fight the bad guys. Stop attacking the farm, you morons, we need the food. Jokes aside, I feel that this scenario is like an improved version of York so far. Very slow paced and massive in scope if compared to the standard. Oof, that hurts like a brick to the teeth. I just really hope that the other scenarios aren't this long or dragged on, because it's a lot to do in one go. Although I can't get my hopes up with people saying Ragnar can take up to 9 hours, and considering fine hair took me 4 hours the last, the last time I played it. But we are now reaching the docks, it's almost time for us to find a proper home for our rascals. Oh no, the Huns are coming again. You guys better sing to the docks faster, cause they're coming in bigger numbers. Did the priest just destroy the market by singing? We get the docks in New Carthage and order some transport ships to get the fuck out of here before the Huns arrive. But we will come back to the priest earthquake powers, I feel that can really come in handy later down the line. Why are you so angry? We can use this for ourselves. With the small fleet ready, we move to raid Africa's coast, but decide to get ourselves some drummonds before getting cocky. And some cavaliers, because fuck it, why not skip some sentries and go full medieval on Rome. New Carthage feels the weight of the Vandal sack and slowly crumble all the Roman buildings within range of the Drummonds in Africa, because they still supply us with some nice shackles. How does that work? I have no idea. We are throwing rocks at their houses and money is showing up in our bank account. But I'm not gonna complain, that is what's keeping us in the game. More Huns coming, we gotta make haste towards Carthage. I don't wanna deal with them again. Fucking finally, over 3 hours to reach the final home. We get her closer to the docks waiting for the signal to board the ships, while the Drummonds clear the way for the arrival of vandalism in Africa. The army is sent ahead to clear the city and Carthage's last massacre begins on the city garrison. Luckily at this point we already have pretty much a post-imperial army and the city poses little threat. The civilians are loaded up in the ship, make their way through the Mediterranean and arrive at the port of the city just as the army finishes decapitating the remaining centurions. Carthage is now the capital of the Vandals. Why they chose North Africa for this, I have no idea. Maybe they got tired of the cold and just wanted to relax by the beach. 
Vandals, the 5th century liberal Scandinavian girl. Because we had enough resources for once, a full upgrade of the army is ordered, and we start selling the almost endless supply of timber accumulated across our journey. Only sacking Rome remains for the Vandals, and according to history, we only have five years to do so. The sea towards the great city is polluted with the Roman navy, so more pillaging is needed to afford a counter navy. Lucky for us, the Romans have a camp right next to our beloved capital, netting us enough shackles to build some sick new fire ships. And taking it ripe, we will. The city is well protected by walls and towers, a minor inconvenience for our superior anachronism. Jesus Christ, the Huns are scary. Good thing they never learned how to ship. Our first batch of Huskars make way to secure a landing area, and instantly engage in a slap fight with the outside defenses of the city. Another sweet source of income for the Vandal War effort. With the area clear, more soldiers start arriving, and the mighty walls of Rome are caught and prepared by the might of the technology from six centuries in the future. This is the equivalent of Joan of Arc defending Orleans with Reaper drones and an M16 assault rifle. But hey, again not something I can complain about, it's already four hours into the game, I need an edge somehow. The Huskars rush in to start the murdering while the Trebs follow a bit behind leveling all the buildings on the way for more sweet Roman gold. Some barracks were also built on the coast to keep a flow of soldiers coming in, because I knew it wouldn't last long against legionaries, centurions and onagers. The Goth's strength is usually in numbers, something I can't really afford when there's literally zero gold mines on the map. The objective is not really clear, it simply says sack Rome, so naturally the first step is taking down all its wonders. Graffiti of penises is not enough, we must amp up the vandalism. Having some of my family coming from Rome, it feels wrong to do this. But at the same time, look at the crumbling. We destroyed the Colosseum before, now we destroy its kid. Which apparently is enough sacking for them. No, no, fuck free play. It's been four hours already, give me victory. I can't do this anymore. It's been dragged on for too long. Mother of God, this was a lot. Four hours, 17 minutes and eight seconds. By far the longest time I've had and only 800 units killed comes to show how slow this was. Alright, you saw the timer. 4 hours, 17 minutes and 8 seconds. One scenario taking longer than 6 full campaigns that we played before. Also a horrible time even though it's a long scenario. After playing I saw that Ornlu did it in under 3 hours and my confidence was just crushed. It's a good scenario, don't get me wrong, but I feel this could have easily been a campaign on itself. Revenge against the Franks, helping the Swabies and Allens, the Siege of New Carthage, a home for the Vandals and the sack of Rome. But what the fuck do I know? One more thing to note, I'm not the biggest fan of the narration so far. The voice acting and information is top notch as always, but I definitely missed the character speaking and some story building within the campaign. This felt a bit too documentary for my taste. The partial time, because yes, we're back at it, stands at 189 hours, 26 minutes and 16 seconds, and I can feel that we will reach 250 hours easily by the end of these scenarios. I decided to do one scenario a week for now, instead of doing all of them at once, because I'm also working on some other things on the side, and I know I'll never finish if I did it all in one video. 